So as I go through the presentation, you will get to understand more about what we do and why is it important to save these animals. So I'll just share my screen. What we will do is everybody will be on mute. Once the presentation is over, we will have a discussion. You can ask any queries you have, any questions you have. We will answer all those, okay? Okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Yes, Adavi is also here. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. uh, so Debashri, maybe I can share the presentation. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Should I go ahead and do that? Uh, yes. Good morning, Sharmila. Yes. Uh, so sorry for being a minute late. Uh, yeah, there was some uh, crisis and uh, I'll explain it. But for now, we will just continue. Yes, I'll uh, my uh, sorry, Madhavi, yes. would you like to take in, uh, take, uh, take up the webinar? Yes, yes. I'll sure. So, share my Madhavi, uh, Madhavi is a volunteer here at uh, People for Animals. And today, Miss Madhavi is going to tell you about BFA and what we do. Thank you, Madhavi. Welcome to GIS, Miss Madhavi. Thank you. 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 Ma'am, I cannot hear Ma'am, your feet. voice is very low, ma'am. Wait, uh, wait. Okay. Uh, can you hear now? Is it any? Yes, ma'am. Ma okay. All right. Uh, so, so good morning, everyone. Sorry for being a minute or two late. Um, so very happy to be here. And as Debashri has already explained, uh, we are going to see a very nice presentation. Um, so what I'd like to do actually is uh, it would be nice if all of you stay on mute. But if you see a slide which I'm explaining and you're very curious and you have a question, can you please raise your virtual hand and I will try and answer your question. OK, so what we'll do is we'll ask you to, uh, you know, raise your virtual hand and then we'll call out your name. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. OK, so is that clear everyone? But the rest of the time, please stay on mute so that we don't disturb each other. OK, all right, so I'll share my screen now. Second, please. Sorry about that. Good morning, ma'am. I joined right, joined right now. Did I miss anything? Nothing. We just started. No worries. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, can everyone see my screen and hear me as well? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Okay. Yes, All right. Thank yes, you. That's that's enough. Now on Mom, mute, I everyone. I saw this somewhere. Okay. Yes. Ma'am, so I cannot hear you properly as there is a lot of background disturbance now. Okay. Can I talk for a minute? Yes. Please. Go ahead. Ma'am, just was just a second, ma'am. Sorry to interrupt you, children. Please set your internet connections uh, properly because we all are able to hear uh, Madhavi, Madhavi ma'am very clearly. And please don't interrupt the teachers in between. And we know these rules, right? You have something, only raise your hand. We will call your name. Don't interrupt ma'am so many times with them, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, so uh, just to let you know, we have such an interesting presentation with so much to learn. And if we interrupt each other, then what will happen is that we will run out of time because we do have to finish in one hour and you have to continue with your school day. So we'll run out of time and we may not be able to finish. Yeah, and I don't want that to happen because we'll miss out on a lot. So please follow the rules. It will be better for all of us. We'll raise our virtual hands and speak only when our name is called out. The rest of the time, everyone stays on mute, please. OK, okay so ma yeah. Starting now, so no need to say OK, yes, no, it's all right. All right, so here we are with our first slide. PFA is People for Animals, and it's a wildlife hospital as well as a wildlife rescue and conservation center. Don't worry, we'll explain all this. We are going to learn a lot. 
And this beautiful, charming creature you see here is called a slender loris. And it lives right here in our city, even though most people have never seen it. OK, so I'm just going to move on. So our whole focus today is how all of us, you and I, we live in the city along with so many wild creatures. OK. So here are some exciting looking. Uh, comic characters or you might have seen them in the movies and have you noticed so many of these superheroes are named after animals. So why is that? Why do we name our superheroes after animals? And the reason is animals are amazing. Animals have amazing powers. So many all common animals living around us have amazing abilities and we don't even know about it. So here are some examples. So we saw Batman. Bats can fly in the dark using echolocation. Echolocation is where they make a sound. The sound hits an object and bounces back. And because of that bounce back sound, they are able to know where they are and they can fly around so fast in complete darkness. We also saw the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And did you know that the turtle shells are super strong? They act like a shield. It's like when a turtle feels threatened, it will just pull its head, feet inside the shell and then nothing can harm it. Yeah, no animal can harm it. Even if there's a tiger, it cannot penetrate this shell. It's like a super strong shield. And we saw Spider-Man. Spider-Man, as you know, if he can, you know, uh, put out webs, right? And a spider web is made out of a type of spider silk. And that silk is so strong that if it was bigger, if it was like steel, then it would actually be stronger than steel. Yeah, and the last one we saw was Hawkeye and Hawks can see eight times better than humans. Yeah, so even though they fly high up above and they're looking below on the ground to see, they may see a small rat or something moving and immediately they can dive down to eat it. Yeah, so they may be very high in the sky and yet they can see everything clearly. So. Moving on to our beautiful city of Bengaluru. So who lives in our city? We usually think of, you know, ourselves, our people, that is human beings, our friends, our family, our, the, everyone we meet in our school. Yeah. Some of you may even have pets at home, right? Some of you may have pets at home. Yeah, so please don't interrupt. Remember what we said. Only raise your virtual hand. And uh, Debashri, can you uh, please handle that part of it? That if someone sure, raises their sure. virtual hand and would like to ask a question. And remember, sure. please ask your questions after I've finished speaking. Yeah, not in the middle of when I'm speaking. Thank you. OK, so who lives in our city? As we said, there's 12 million people, right? That's a huge number. That's like 120 lakh people just here in Bengaluru. And these are friends, family, and even animals we keep at pets. And most of us forget there's also wild animals, wild creatures right here in our city with us. So, so who are these wild animals? How, how come we don't know much about them? So let's find out a little bit more. Urban means uh, relating to the city, right? So what is urban wildlife or what is city wildlife? When we think of wildlife, we think of, you know, big animals living in a forest like tigers and deer and but how come we say there's wildlife right here in Bengaluru? So are we talking about pets and domestic animals like cats, dogs, cows? No, this is not wildlife. These are pets and domestic animals. They depend on us for all our needs, all their needs. So you know, we have to provide them with food, shelter. Some of them even stay in our houses, right? So this is not wildlife, right? And what about the dogs and cats we see roaming around on the road? They are free. 
they don't belong to anyone but they are not wildlife we consider them stray animals another word for stray is feral yeah these are feral or stray animals once upon a time some many years ago they used to be pets but somehow either the people who were looking after them stopped looking after them and just left them on the road or maybe they ran away yeah and now their children and their descendants are stray cats and dogs so these are also not wild animals there are also some other animals like rats yeah which live in the city but we don't consider them wildlife the reason is these animals there are huge numbers of them and they also start to spread diseases to humans so these are not wildlife as such we consider them pests pests are creatures that usually reproduce they breed very fast and they cause a lot of harm and diseases to humans yeah so this is also not wildlife what is wildlife then birds squirrels monkeys all these are considered wildlife many of you would have seen monkeys in the city we call them macaques you would have seen squirrels either in your own backyards or gardens or even when you go to the park you would see squirrels and of course if you look out into the sky you would see birds sometimes we even hear them right and these are truly wild animals they don't depend on human beings at all they know how to take care of themselves they don't need human beings to provide them with food or shelter and most of them the numbers are quite small some in fact are very rare and almost close to extinction and most of them don't harm human beings in any way okay so this is the difference between pets stray animals and wild animals so with pfa only rescues and treats wild animals okay so not cats and dogs and not feral animals and pets pfa does run a separate pet clinic which is only for pets but that is separate yeah it's not part of the wildlife hospital so are there any questions so far anyone with mama questions? prishwan mama just yeah. want to tell you something mama i have a doubt some okay. mama okay. i have a doubt everyone please on mute debashri ma'am will call out your name and then you can speak Uh, yes. <coughs> uh, Sharmila, ma'am, can you please call out? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Arogi, what is it? Arogi, unmute and ask. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So my doubt is that, uh, like, yes. um, Madhavi, ma'am, and Debrashri, ma'am, are uh, um, rescuers from PFA, right? I want to be something similar to that when I grow up. I want to be a veterinary doctor. Okay, that's doctor a wonderful, wonderful idea, Arohi. <laughs> so what we'll do here is let's focus our questions on the presentation for now. At the end, we can ask general questions. Okay. So for now, all questions must be on what we have just heard and just seen in the presentation. Yes, ma'am. I have a ma question. Ma'am, what you were just talking about? Yes, please, ma'am. Ma'am, ma I am. Ma'am, wait, children. Wait, wait, children. Oh, on we have just please. started. Wait, children. Let's hear a little bit more about the presentation, and then you can raise your hand if you have questions. Now, you please remove your virtual hand and wait, children. Listen to the class first. Okay. Ma'am, I have a question about this slide. Okay. okay. So, who is please? that? Who me? is that? Ma'am, me, Arushi. Okay, only Arushi will keep your virtual hand up. Others, please remove your virtual hand. You're disturbing children. Let's let's listen. At the end, we we'll give a chance. If you have questions, when Madhavi Ma'am says, if you have questions, children, then you will raise your virtual. Hand. Until that, uh, until you hear Madhavi Ma'am asking you, children, if you have questions, raise your hand. Only when you hear that, you will raise your virtual hand. Until that, you put your hand down. 
Yes, dear. One question alone. What was your question? <laughs> Ma'am, like if some like some animals don't even harm us, even if we harm them or something like that, or will they harm us if we harm them back? Yeah. So you, are you talking about wild animals? Yes. Yes. Okay, any yes, animal when it is attacked or if it is scared by humans, right? Sometimes we may yes. think we may think we are being kind. and we are trying to go close to an animal yeah this is true even of stray dogs and cats sometimes we go close to it wanting to pet it or thinking that we will help it out <laughs> but so animals don't speak our language they are not the same as humans they don't understand what humans are trying to do so whenever a human being goes close they may think a human being is trying to attack them and any animal when it feels attacked it may try to attack back just to defend itself just to save its life yeah so always always remember never go close to any wild creature or any stray animal because they may not understand what you are trying to do okay so let's move okay. on now remember in future everybody stays on mute <laughs> if you have a question This only about mama. only about the slides raise your virtual hand sharmila ma'am will call your name only when your name is called you may unmute yourself and speak so no interruptions please otherwise we will waste time and we will not be able to finish okay thank you so much children i know you will follow what we are saying from now onwards okay so but i have a in the slide okay uh, we already said no speaking out of turn only raised hands only speak when your name is called out so i am going to move on now because you didn't follow the rules so i am sorry you won't get a turn to speak but next time i hope you follow the rules and then you will get a turn to speak okay so remember any... your question children uh, remember your question when i call your name then you can ask your question miss madhavi ma'am please continue ma'am yes thank you sharmila so um these are untamed creatures wild creatures and there are some amazing creatures that live right here in the city most of us would never have seen them or even if they live right near us we would not even have noticed them so here are some examples okay we are just going to look at them for now don't worry what species they are we will see much more but just look at the amazing variety of creatures we see right here in our city okay so if they are all around us where do they live how come we have not seen them so they live in trees parks fields lakes buildings and some even underground okay they find some small space somewhere and they live there and and live their whole life there and we may not even realize so for example there is a lovely bird called a swift and there's a whole colony of swifts that has created beautiful nests out of mud in my own building and they have done it high up it's a high tall building and they have done it on the top floor and most of the people in my building don't even realize they are there and they have been living there for almost 10 to 15 years and nobody knows they are there because they never observe okay so here we can see so we have been talking so much about wild animals wild animals so what do we care or why should we pay attention to these wild animals and you know we love our pets the pets stay with us they give us affection they give us love but what do wild animals do for us why should we care we don't realize that wild animals help us in so many ways and actually those ways are very important in fact our very life depends on those okay so here we are with the first way they help us they pollinate plants so you would have read about this in your uh, science class that <clears throat> when plants are pollinated the flowers turn into fruits and seeds right so bees butterflies and sunbirds actually uh, drink nectar from the flower and in return take the pollen to another plant when that pollen reaches the other plant then it can form into uh, fruit and seeds right the second way is that they disperse seeds 
So you can see all these different creatures. They eat fruit and then they drop the seeds in different places. Yeah. And because of that, new plants can grow, new trees can grow. OK, and as you may know, trees are so important to our city and plants. Most of these trees that you see have not been planted by humans. They have been planted by animals and trees are absolutely important to our city. All of us depend on trees. How? Because they purify the air. We all know Bangalore city is so polluted, so much traffic, so much smoke. And it's because of trees that the, the air gets polluted, the air gets purified. So some of you would have heard me coughing. This cough, it's not a cold. I have a disease called asthma. OK, and this asthma happens because of the air pollution. So because Bangalore air is polluted, I fall sick and I start coughing. And thanks to trees, at least the air gets purified to some extent. If there were no trees, then the air would be much more polluted and maybe I wouldn't even be able to stay in this city. I would have to go somewhere else. OK, also trees cool our city down. Yeah, anyone who has walked on the road in summer, you know, when you're directly under the sun, it's so hot on the road, right? But the moment you walk under a tree, under the shade of a tree, immediately it's much cooler we feel much better, right? So trees cool us whole city down. And something many of you may not know, because the roots of the tree go into the ground, they also hold water in the ground. And this groundwater, if suppose you have a bore well in your house, that bore well is actually taking water from the ground. And it's because of trees that that water is still in the ground. OK, so trees help us get so many benefits and it's animals that plant the trees. OK, so we heard of pollination and seed dispersal. They also eat up unwanted things, things that we don't want in our city like dead animals. So here are some creatures like crows, kites and fish that eat up these creatures and because of them, our city is cleaner, right? So imagine if these creatures were not there, all these dead rats and horrible things would just be lying around and we would actually have to pay someone every day to go and clean them up. But instead, all these creatures just clean them up for free. OK. And the fourth one is they control pests and diseases. So you can see there's a rat snake, insect bat and barn owl. Rat snakes and barn owls eat rodents or rats. And they eat so many that our city, they keep the population of rats under control. If these creatures were not there, the rats would just become more and more and more, and they would be all over the place, on the roads, entering our houses. But thanks to these creatures, they are able to keep the population in control, and the rats don't harm us so much, OK? Long ago, not now, OK, long ago, Many, many years ago, um, even hundreds of years ago, sometimes the rat population would increase so much they would cause deadly diseases. One of them was called plague and that used to kill millions of people. OK, millions of people would die. And thanks to all these friendly creatures, we don't have such problems. Yeah, you can see also insect bat. Many of you may have heard about bats and you would think, oh no, bats are the ones that cause diseases and they are, uh, they are not nice creatures, but that's not true. Bats are also very helpful. Earlier in the earlier slide, you saw bats eating fruit. Other types of bats also eat insects and these insects like mosquitoes can cause malaria, chikungunya and so many other diseases, right? So just like the snake and the owl, the insect bats keep the mosquitoes and other insects in check. OK, thanks to these creatures, our health is better. We are healthier. We have fewer diseases. Yeah, so now I have a question. Mama, I have a question. Yeah, please, no talking out of turn. Anyone who talks out of turn, I'm sorry, you won't get a chance to speak right now. 
So only those who have raised their virtual hand can ask the question. Uh, Sharmila, ma'am, ma yeah. yes, Sharmila, ma'am, ma please do yes. Dhruva, you can unmute Dhruva. What's your question? Actually, ma'am, I wanted to say that the, and actually, ma'am, I wanted to say that and, and that, that corona was was all caused by by, uh, by bats. Bats. Okay. Yes. Good point, Dhruva. I'm so glad you raised this point. So the thing is, bats did really cause corona. I'll tell you why. Okay. So if we had not interfered with the bats, suppose the bats were living by themselves in the wild, going about their daily lives, corona would not have come to humans. Where did the problem come? The problem came because humans caught the bats, put them in cages and kept those bats near them. Because of that, the disease went from bats to humans. So it is actually a human that has caused Corona, not the bat. The Ma humans got the bat and kept them near them. And because of that, the disease jumped from the bat to the human, right? So we cannot blame the bats. We have to blame the humans who did that. Do you understand Ma the difference? Ma Dhruva, put your hand down, Dhruva. Arna, what's your question, Arna? Ma, Ma, I just want to say that, but Ma, uh, like, but China people did that, right? Keep doing yeah, bad. Yeah, so let's not blame any one country because it could have happened anywhere. You may be right that it happened in China this time, but in India as well, people uh, catch wild animals and keep them in cages, which is illegal, which is very wrong. Nobody should do that. And yet people do that all over the world. And these are not people who understand what is the right thing to do. Okay. Uh -huh. so Ma, this time, I have one question about the rat snake. So, I'm sorry, no. You will not talk out of your turn, children. Out of turn, nobody gets Only a chance to talk. Only five questions we'll so. take. Only five questions. The rest yeah. of you so keep your any, hands. Write Ma, your question. Uh -huh. Write your Please question. remember, anyone who talks out of turn, you lose your chance to speak this time. Write okay? your the question. The girl who just spoke out of turn, I'm sorry, you Ma, don't get your chance. I have another doubt, Mommy. Wait, wait, children. Wait, Ikisha, thank you, Arna. Ikisha, what's your question, Ikisha? Ma ma Mama, I, I have that, uh, Mama, I have that question in the urban that wildlife uh, uh, mom was explaining. Mom, like, uh, mom, uh, in that picture, there was a uh, there was a pigeon in the stray animals uh, category. So, ma'am, why can't it be in the, like, the wild animals category? You only told that, like... Yes. Yes, very good question. Very nice question, uh, Ikisha. And I love that you're play, paying such close attention to the slides. I really like your concentration and your observation skills. Very nice. OK, that's a wonderful question. And it is sometimes a little difficult to know the difference between a stray animal and a wild animal. So why is it all other birds we treat as wild. So every other bird we say is a wild animal. Only pigeon we treat as a stray animal. I'll tell you why, Ikisha. So the problem with that is what has happened is over the years, once upon a time, long ago, pigeons were also wild. They used to live in the wild in India. But slowly, slowly, as human cities began to grow, they started living only close to humans. They stopped going into the forest, into the other wild spaces, and they started staying only near humans and human beings started feeding them. You would have seen many people put out rice and other things for the pigeons. So many, many yes. pigeons started becoming very dependent on humans and their population started to grow just as human population grew, right? In Bangalore, we have more than 100 lakh humans. That's a huge population. Similarly, population of pigeons also started to grow lots and lots and lots. And when the population of any one creature becomes too much, more than what nature wanted it to be, then diseases start spreading faster in that population. Okay, 
So actually, pigeons are birds that can spread a lot of diseases, both to humans as well as to other birds. So I would really recommend never try to, you know, hold or touch a pigeon. Please treat it as if it could have some kind of disease. Yeah. So that is why we don't keep pigeons in the wild category, because suppose, suppose, there was an injured bird which was taken to some other bird, say like a crow or a kite, which was in PFA getting treatment. And right. now we bring in a pigeon, right? That pigeon may have some disease and it will infect that crow or kite. And because of that, that kite will die, right? So we try to keep other birds and pigeons separate. Is that clear, Ikesha? Madhavi, I yeah. would like to add question. to yes. this, please. Absolutely. I want please. To finish yes. uh, so um, I just wanted to tell that, but children, if you see an injured pigeon, you can always call a rescue center. There is a separate rescue center which only rescues pigeon, even though it spread a disease, but it's still a living being. So if you see it injured, you don't need to panic. You just need to help that bird. Uh, there is a separate organization uh, called as Dana Prani um, Seva Samit that rescues pigeon. You can always give them a call. Uh, it's not that if you see an injured pigeon and then since it's spread diseases, you should ignore it. Every living being has to be helped. It's just that as Miss Madhavi explained, you don't need to handle it. You will never handle any injured animal that you see by yourself. Okay. You just need to call if you uh, as Miss Madhavi mentioned, if you see an injured crow or a black kite, you can always call PFA rather than handling it by yourself. You can always tell your parents that you have seen this injured bird and they can always give us a call. Thank you, Madhavi. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Debashree. Okay, Marika, 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 we take Thanks, question now. Arika, 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 you can ask it an answer. Arika, you can ask your question, Arika. Ma'am, what is the meaning of a pest and feral? Yes, so yes. feral so is the same as stray, stray animal. That is an animal such as a stray dog. You can tell the difference between a stray dog and a pet dog, right? A pet dog is usually with one family, stays with them, is fed by them. But the stray dogs just roam around on the streets, right? So stray, feral is another word for stray. Okay, and what was your other question? First meaning of pest. 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 Yeah. Yes. 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 That causes harm to humans. Okay, so for some examples, a mosquito, rats, these are all creatures that spread a lot of diseases to humans. So therefore, we call them pests. And usually, pests are creatures that multiply that reproduce very fast so their population is very very big and it becomes very big very fast that's why it becomes a problem yeah so as you may not know but actually even in the wild in the forest there are types of mice and rat living but those are not pests only the rats which live in our cities are pests because they live near human beings and their population is very tough. They may spread some disease to us. Okay. Thank so, you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank Tanish, you. I would Tanish, like to continue. your question, Tanish. The rest of you, write down your question. We'll ask again. Only Tanish, unmute yes. and ask your question. Unmute and ask your question. Ma'am, I just wanted to tell that in my grandfather's house, in the backyard, there used to be there. Monkeys used to come over there and eat leaves and bananas. Yes. Yes, sometimes the monkeys find places. They are just looking for food and they don't know the difference between a forest and a, somebody's garden. They don't know if it belongs to a human being or not. So they wherever they find they food, they they find it. They find it. Man, sometimes they just run from the walls to walls. Okay, all right. Now we will go ahead with the presentation. Okay. Children, mute yourself. Wait for your turn until your name is called. Mute yourself. Yes, Madhavi, ma'am, you can continue, ma'am. Okay, so here's a very, very interesting slide. This is telling you something about snakes. Now, many of us have some wrong ideas about snakes. And many people, human beings, spread all kinds of wrong stories about snakes. 
they just make up some story and spread it so snakes never drink milk they don't like milk they don't want milk yet there is this festival some of you may have heard about nag panchmi where people actually try to feed milk to snakes this makes no sense because a snake doesn't eat milk they most of the snakes especially cobras and rat snakes they eat rodents rats they don't want milk yeah so and they don't take revenge so sometimes in movies you see that oh if one snake is killed then the mate you know the uh, the friend of the snake the partner of the snake will track down the human being and come to kill the human being these are all just made up stories snakes have no reason to take any revenge they don't care about taking revenge on human beings yeah if someone tries to threaten a snake go close to it just to defend its own life it may attack otherwise no wild animal is interested in you so one will speak out of turn please mute yourself okay ma'am she won't turn any of them many snakes cannot she hear she will not give a chance for you to ask questions if you are going to speak yeah, until your gonna... name is called you will not talk anything i'm sorry those who are talking out of turn we will write down your names and you will not get a turn to ask your question so i i don't want to do this but i have a I requested this so many times and yet you are not following the rules so now we will have to try to do something because there are so many others who are waiting patiently and who are following the rules and i really don't want them to suffer and not be able to hear the full presentation that's not fair right so many snakes most snakes actually all snakes cannot hear they don't have any ears and so when you see the snake charmer playing this musical instrument and the snake is moving it has nothing to do with the sound the snake cannot hear any sound the reason it is swaying its body is because the snake charmer is swaying its bo his body and the snake is just copying it yeah so there is no thing of the snakes listening to music and doing something the only way snakes can hear is through vibrations in the ground they can sense it in the body right so if there is a loud noise coming on the ground then the snake can sense it in its body okay and not all snakes have poison or venom okay many snakes you may have heard like cobra have very deadly venom and if it bites you then you have you know your life is in danger but this these snakes are actually a small minority only few snakes are like that most of the snakes don't have any venom any poison and the one of the most common snakes in our city is the rat snake which eats rats and it is completely harmless it cannot do anything to you okay and remember snakes are not interested in attacking humans and doing anything to humans they are busy leading their own life it is only when we go close to them we try to do something they may get scared and they may try to attack to save their own life yeah so most wild animals attack only if we scare them okay so like all plants and animals we human beings are also a part of nature and we depend on animals and animals depend on us right there's a circular thing and we live if they live so i showed you how animals are the ones that are you know are planting all the plants and trees in our city and they clean up our city and they prevent diseases right so we human beings depend on the wild animals of our city okay so now we'll talk about what pfa wildlife hospital does okay the main work is to save urban wildlife now so many human beings living in our city of bengaluru plus wild animals also sharing the same space sometimes the wild animals get injured or they get lost like a bird may fall from its nest or maybe there's a nest in a tree and a human being goes and cuts down the branch or cuts down the tree and the nest falls to the ground or maybe there's a very busy road okay and a wild creature like a turtle or tortoise or snake wants to cross from one side to the other 
and there's so much heavy traffic and maybe they get hit by a car or by a truck right so because there are so many people and so many animals sometimes animals get lost or hurt and that's what it does we save these creatures we rescue them and we and in the end we release them back into the natural world okay remember we this is pfa is not a zoo it's not about taking wild creatures and keeping them in cages it's about finally releasing them back into their natural habitat or environment okay so let's see the whole how does it work so imagine you were playing downstairs in your compound and while running you fell down and you got hurt right so first what we have to do is take you would have to go back home right go to a safe place right so this is the first step of what pfa does if an animal is lost or hurt someone will call who has seen the animal will call up pfa okay we will give you the numbers at the end don't worry and this step is called rescue so the rescuers rush to that place as soon as possible and then they take the hurt lost or often animals back to the pfa center okay so this is the first step then you can see we will give you some examples of the rescue here is a pfa a uh, rescuer rescuing a snake which has come into someone's house okay so please the first thing to remember about this is that these rescues are done by people who are experts they have received years of training so they know exactly how to handle the animal so that neither they nor the animal will get harmed in any way we ordinary people cannot rescue animals it takes many years of training before it is possible especially when the animal could be a deadly snake or something like that okay so here you can see a barn owl snakes and a macaque that's a monkey being rescued okay these are creatures that might have come into someone's house or might have been injured in some way yeah so they cannot live in the wild they cannot continue to live there they need our help right so that's what pfa is doing they are trying to help these animals so that they can continue to live in the wild and to do that they also have ambulances right you may have seen that if someone is very seriously ill what do we have to do we have to call the ambulance so that the ambulance can take that person to the hospital right the same thing happens here we have a wildlife hospital and the ambulance takes the injured animal to the hospital okay and just to let you know all these things that you see on the screen making an animal dance or keeping it in a cage or trying to make it do some tricks all these activities are completely illegal okay it is not allowed in india any wild animal is protected by the law you are not supposed to buy sell or even keep it in your house it is illegal to do that and yet there are some bad people who continue to do it but what they are doing is wrong never encourage anyone you see who is keeping an, an a wild animal trapped in some way yeah the wild animals belong in the wild in their natural habitat they are never happy to be kept in a cage or along with human beings okay so now we talked about rescue what is the second step so okay suppose you came to your house but then we realized no you need some treatment right so now we have to take you to the doctor and the doctor has to decide how best to treat you right so this is the second step of treatment so that you can recover yeah so that you are sick and now you need to get better okay 
So what what does the doctor do? First, the doctor has to look at you properly. Maybe the doctor will use a stethoscope and ask you to breathe. Or if you have got hurt on your knee, the doctor has to look at the knee properly and see, do you have a fracture? What has gone wrong? That part of it is called diagnosis. Once the doctor has decided exactly what is wrong, then the doctor can give you treatment, right? So same way for the animals. As you know, a doctor who treats animals is called a veterinarian or a, for short, we just call them vet, right? So the vets first do diagnosis, then do treatment. And you can see here all these different animals, the vet is checking them, doing diagnosis to see if what is wrong with the animal. And here is that beautiful animal called the loris. <clears throat> So here they are weighing the loris to check is it healthy or is it sick? When we are sick, usually we lose weight and that's how we can tell if an animal is healthy or sick. OK, just as for human beings, suppose, you know, we fall from a tree and our bone breaks, then we have to get an X-ray. The same way animals also can be X-rayed to check if any of their bones inside have got broken. Here you can see a monitor lizard is being x-rayed. Yeah, and some of you who have been to a hospital, you may know there's something called an intensive care unit or ICU. This is for very sick patients who have to be kept separate and who have to need lots of care so that they'll get better. Same way for animals also. If the animal is very sick, very badly, badly injured, they need special care. So all these things are available at the PFA hospital. There's um, also sometimes when people are sick, they need operations, right? Another word for operation is surgery. So there's also a surgical unit in PFA. Here you can see there was a, a turtle that has uh, its shell got broken. So as I said, sometimes when they are crossing the road or maybe if there's some heavy machinery, they might have an accident and their shell might break. Now, this broken shell is just like a fracture in a human being. It has to be repaired. So here you can see the PFA doctors have put pins to keep the shell together so that the shell will heal and then the turtle will be normal again. Yeah. Similarly, for a snake also, snakes also have bones, even though sometimes we think we may, they may not have because of the way they move but they do have bones and sometimes they get broken. So here they are mending the bones. Some other therapies which are used, infrared therapy and also medicines. Yeah, the most important thing, right? Usually when we are sick, we need some medicine. And here you can see a bird is being fed with a medicine. Then sometimes small babies get lost, right? We said if a tree is cut and a baby falls from its nest, or the mother has been, you know, the tree was cut down, the mother had gone to find food. By the time the mother comes back, the tree is not there. So this poor baby is lost. And we take these babies, we keep them safe. Babies need lot of warmth. Normally for the warmth, what do they do? They go close to their mother's fur or feathers and the mother's body keeps them warm. But if they are not near their mothers, they need warmth in some other way. That's what incubators are. It basically keeps the babies warm. Now, this is the second step was basically giving medicines and treatment to recover. The third step is we need to rehabilitate them. So this might be a new word for you. Yeah, rehabilitation basically means we have to do whatever we need so that they are ready for the wild again. Yeah. So just treatment is not enough. The bird needs sometimes you may know from, you know, your elders at home or your neighbors that even if you have got an operation in a hospital, you can't just walk out the next day and you're back to normal, right? You have to come home. You have to rest for many days. Only maybe after one or two weeks can you start walking around. Can you start going to school or office, right? So the same way the birds, the animals need to be taken care of for many weeks 
so that they are back to their normal healthy self. This is called rehabilitation. OK, so here you can see a small baby hair is being fed. Also a baby squirrel is being fed. And here is a sunbird. So each animal is given the food that it needs. These are all experts. They know exactly what the animal needs to become healthy. It's not as if the same thing is fed to all the animals. Each bird, each animal is fed exactly according to what its needs are. According to what it eats in the wild, they are given food. And you can see here, even here in this sunbird, they have put a flower and then they are feeding it with a syringe. This is because this is what a sunbird does in the wild. It feeds on the nectar of flowers. So this way the bird starts to get used to feeding from flowers. This is the whole idea. We don't want to keep them in the PFA hospital. We want them to get used to feeding by themselves the same way as they would in the wild. Yeah, so you can see many more examples of animals being fed and you can see how <coughs> different creatures need different kind of food. <coughs> Sometimes, as you know, reptiles and birds, excuse me, they lay eggs <coughs> and sometimes if a nest <coughs> is abandoned or it falls, there may be eggs there we can still help the animal. We can help the eggs hatch safely by giving it warmth, by taking proper care of it. <coughs> and then when the animals hatch from the eggs, like this little turtle, we can then help it grow, grow big, grows, grow up so that it can continue to live its adult life in the wild. Okay. Then in addition to food, we also need to keep the animals clean. <clears throat> Here you can see a little baby macaque is getting a medicinal bath to keep its skin and fur clean. Sometimes it's not enough just to feed the animals. Animals also have brains. They also need something more in their life. Yeah, anyone who has kept a dog, you know, <clears throat> it's not enough to just feed the dog. You have to play with it. You have to interact with it. You have to give it a space. So if you have a garden, you have to allow it to run around in the garden. Only then the dog can be happy, right? So the same way with wild animals, they also need their environment, the, the surroundings around them to be interesting and to be comfortable. And that's what PFA tries to do. So for this jackal, specially, um, they created a, a, an environment within the enclosure which was very similar to its wild environment. So you can see the jackal usually <coughs> goes and hides in holes. And here they have created a similar kind of thing where the jackal would feel at home and comfortable. Uh, Madhavi. Yes. Yes, that jackal had a very interesting story actually, children. Yeah, so go ahead was uh, this they it, this was actually given handed over to PFA by this village people. Now this village people they took in this jackal thinking it as a dog. So they actually took it as a puppy and they started keeping it as an animal and slowly it shows that its features were different and it started to actually you know chase the chicken in the village and then they were like oh god this is not a dog yes and then they called PFA and then PFA <laughs> came and rescued the jackal. And you know what? It didn't know how to be a wild animal at all. It used to come here. It used to be just as dog. If you call its name was Raja. If you used to call Raja, it will come running to you. So rehabilitation process in itself is a very, uh, how to say, long process. For the animal to think it's wild, we had to build in its natural habitat. It used to eat bread and milk. It never used to eat chicken. We used to actually, uh, you know, we changed its diet. We lessened the human interaction. And then later Raja became wild and we released it. Thank you, Madhuri. Yeah, thank you so much, Debatri. As you can see, taking care of a wild animal 
sometimes these wild animals have actually been kept as pets by people without proper understanding <coughs> so it's actually trying to make the animal which was kept as a pet making it wild again so that it can live by itself in the wild without any dependency on human beings not expecting human beings to feed it to take care of it this jackal when it was released could then go and kill whatever animal it needed for food by itself and stay in the wild by itself yeah uh, similarly this is a malabar giant squirrel uh, it's not common in bangalore it's very rare actually it's usually seen in the forests in the western ghats but <clears throat> this had strayed close to the city and now you can see it was being given it's been given a kind of environment which it is used to with lots of leafy tree branches and places to jump and run and also a little nest box for it to feel sheltered at night right so we are trying to keep the animal as comfortable as it would be in the wild uh, also madhavi the malabar yeah. giant squirrel i'm sorry to interrupt sorry yes, no no please go yes. ahead please. yes so what happened children was uh, this all animals are not supposed to be kept as pet because these are urban wildlife so what happened with this malabar giant squirrel they were actually uh, illegally trading it they were selling it as brown rabbit they didn't know it was a giant squirrel so pfa got the news of it and rescued this malabar giant squirrel and once rehabilitated it was sent back to its own habitat so all this animals whichever miss madhavi is showing i think she had spoken about it are not supposed to be kept as pet even if you see a baby squirrel near your house it is hurt it is fallen down from its nest you take it home but please call pfa because here at pfa mm -hmm. different methods of rehabilitation the baby squirrel would need different feeding process so this all we can do so you can always give us a call thank you madhavi thanks debashri so uh, as she said many people are uh, don't know much about animals and but try to keep animals or sell them or make some money out of them but this is all illegal nobody is supposed to keep or trade or buy or sell any wild creature and all these creatures have one place where they belong which is in the wild away from human beings so <clears throat> after caring for these animals they start to grow up so like here there was a small baby dove which has now grown up it has become an adult and similarly here the animals which had to be fed you saw previously they had to be fed using a syringe but as they grow up they we give them practice to start feeding by themselves so here these are birds called herons they actually live near the lakes and they feed on fish so they actually feed on fish in the lakes here so that these animals get used to doing that we have given them a pond with fish in it and they start learning how to fish hunt for themselves yeah so this is making them ready for the wild and as you can see this is a bird called an egret it came as a baby and slowly with lot of care from pfa it has grown up and now it is ready for the wild it can feed by itself it is its full size so just like all the wild birds now this is the most beautiful step that everybody at PS, pfa looks forward to this is the whole purpose of what we do which is release releasing the animal back into its natural habitat remember pfa is not a zoo they don't want to keep the animal they release the animal if the animal is ready for the wild so here you can see many examples of birds being released PFA rescues has rescued more than 25000 actually this number keeps increasing because every month 250 animals are rescued yeah so the huge number of wild creatures have been rescued and most of them 80% percent 
have been released back into the wild. Similarly, the animals are of many, many different types or species, right? The type of an animal is called a species. So here you can see there's a turtle. We have shown you birds, squirrels, so many different types of animals. So now can one of you name the four steps? Remember, no one speaks. Raise your virtual hand. Sharmila ma'am will choose someone. Can someone name the four steps? Shreyas, can you unmute and answer the four steps, Shreyas? Shreyas? Yes, ma'am. The first steps are. Ma'am, the first yes. step is we, when we see a bird hurt or anything, we should call the PFA. Correct. That's called rescue, right? The R's. So the all four names begin with R. So the first step is rescue rescue then the second step we are going to give treatment so that the animal can it re, can re go back to the wild ma'am okay. become again wild right you're jumping a little bit ahead but recover recover right if you are yes. sick and someone gives you medicine and takes care of you you recover so the second step is recover third step is rehab they and rehabit them, them like yeah, they step. help them, ma'am. They help them. Yes. And the fourth and one is, is help them become wild again. Yeah. Help them become ready for the wild. And, and fourth, the fourth step is to release them. Wonderful. That's right, Shreyas. Release. So here are the four steps: rescue, recovery, rehabilitation, and release. Wonderful. Okay. This is basically what the PFA hospital does. Now, many of you may be excited, may think, oh, how can I be part of this? And you can be a part of this. We have many, many people who help out in PFA in many different ways, and we call them our heroes, PFA heroes. So one way is to spread awareness, to tell everybody about PFA and what PFA does, right? So the more people who know about PFA, the more people will know that, oh, if I see a wild creature who needs some help, then I should call PFA, right? That way, more and more wild creatures will get help when they need it. So first step is to spread awareness. Second step, adopt an animal. Now, adopt doesn't mean you take it home and keep it with you. No, the animal will stay in PFA, but you can donate some money so that the animal can get food you can donate some time to take care of the animal, right? So this is adoption, which is from a distance, from afar. So you can adopt an animal, which means basically you contribute something to take care of the animal, okay? Third is you can volunteer. Yeah, you can come to the PFA center. You can be there. You can do some little work there. You are, there are many things to volunteer. And the, fourth, the most important, Making ensure rescue call PFA. So anytime you see an injured animal, uh, a lost animal, please call PFA. Even if you're not sure, is this a wild animal? Is it not? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Even if it's a pigeon, even if it's a stray dog or cat, you can still call PFA and they will guide you on the next steps. Okay. Even though PFA will not take the pigeon or the dog or cat, they will give you proper guidance on whom to call, what to do. Okay, so any animal you see which needs help, please call PFA. All right. Now, what are other ways you can help these wild animals that live with us? Yeah, our wild neighbors. One is to plant native trees. That means trees which live here in Bangalore, not some fancy tree brought from some other place, but trees which used to grow here in Bangalore long before humans came and do it without any chemical pesticides. As we all know, chemical pesticides are very harmful. They not only kill the pests, which are the uh, insects or something that may be harming the plant, but they can also be harmful to humans and other creatures. So one more very important thing is keep out some water for birds to drink and bathe. Usually in the summertime, there's a shortage of water and we feel very hot. We feel very thirsty. 
the same way birds also feel hot and thirsty so if you keep out a bowl of water it will really help them out now some things you should not do you should avoid please don't use single use plastics like plastic water bottles always carry your own water bottle all this plastic when we throw it away lots of it ends up in natural spaces like lakes or gardens or forests and there it may interfere with the animals some animals may eat something from it may get hurt by it some of it may go into their stomach and make them very sick so please avoid single use plastic and this is very very important if any of you fly kites never ever use nylon manja or chinese manja that is very very deadly it causes thousands of injuries and deaths of birds every year please use only cotton thread this nylon manja is so strong it never breaks and so birds wings get entangled in it and they get very badly hurt and it causes them lot of pain and suffering yeah so never ever use ma nylon manja and tell all your friends and family about this only use cotton thread for flying kites now someone mentioned right in the beginning that when you grow up you can also do much more you can become an animal rescuer or a rehabilitator or a vet yourself you can also work with wildlife as a conservationist means people who want to save wildlife you can do research you can become a scientist you can also become a wildlife photographer and that's something many people do even when they take up other careers that as a hobby you can be a photographer you can contribute to what people know about wildlife yeah and this is our number i'm going to leave it on the screen if some of you want to take it down please do even if you don't take it down now any time you want to call pfa you can just check on google if you do pfa bangalore immediately pfa's website will come up then you go to the website you can check out much more information about pfa and also the numbers yeah so any time you see an injured lost animal that in some way is not doing well and needs help please call pfa okay so thank you so much everybody that's the end of our presentation ma'am uh, so sharmila ma'am i know we have gone past the time so can we continue for just a few more minutes okay, sure ma'am sure ma'am children have some questions for you ma'am yes yes so please now thank one you. at a time sharmila ma'am is you your name you. and nobody talks out of turn if you talk out of turn you lose your chance okay so please remember that I really want everyone to get a chance, and if you all talk together, there's only noise. So raise your hand. Sharmila, ma'am, calls your name. Unmute and ask your question. Let's go. Dairia, you unmute and answer. Ask your question, Dairia. 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 Okay. I think maybe something has gone wrong with his connection. Okay, Rishwan. Rishwan, can you unmute Rishwan? Not able to unmute. Give me a second, okay? Are you able to unmute? Yes or no? Give me a second, dear. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Not able to unmute. One minute, ma'am. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think Thayria. Oh, uh, he still is not. Ma'am, ma'am. Rishwan, what's your question, Rishwan? Ma'am, I just wanted to ask because you told that that hawks can see eight times more better than humans, ma'am. So can hawks also see from very high the small ants which are? <laughs> yeah. So it depends. It they may not be able to see the ants from very high. but certainly they will see little bigger creatures like rats because that's their whole way of hunting right they fly in the sky and if you notice they look down while they are flying yeah and while if you we may not see hawks here huh? in bangalore but if you see... okay, oh, can okay. i tell my mom i also I... wanted to ask ma'am yeah just to ma'am this free if we handle if snakes come in our houses Uh, yes. Is a separate organization. 
no, yes, PFA we do. does it. Yeah, yes. PFA will, you can call PFA anytime you or anyone you know sees a snake inside the house or in your garden or somewhere where it shouldn't be, please call PFA. They will come very quickly and help the snake and you out. Ma'am, even once I saw in a video that hermit crabs uh, have shells of their own, so they think that plastic pieces are their shell, yes. and they get stuck and many yes. of them die. Yes, yes, very good. Exactly how... Ma'am, are there also underwater helpers who can help yes. the uh, yes. so uh, animals which snakes, are underwater? Yes. So like we said, turtles and some snakes also live in the water. And sometimes they may get stranded on land. They might get hurt. PFA can help them out also. Yeah. Okay. Can we move okay. on to the next? Thank you, Rishwan. Can we move on to the next? I think Dhairia is uh, available now. Go ahead, Dhairia. Okay. He's still not. Okay. Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> okay. okay. Ma, ma, ma. So you. Ma, ma, so you said that you should not use this manja for for flying kites. Yes. My question was, what is manja? Yes, so manja is actually, it's just a Hindi word for the thread which is used to fly kites. Yeah, so in the in Hindi, it is yes. basically yes. called manja, but there are types of manja. So one is the old type of manja, which is just plain cotton thread, which is what people used to use for hundreds of years. And it does not cause any harm to anybody. But in recent times, in recent decades, people have started bringing out new types of manja. So one type of manja is made with, you know, this glass pieces which are stuck onto the thread. Now that can also cause a lot of harm if you if it goes you know, fast over your hand, it can cut your hand. And there have been cases of even human beings getting hurt. Another type of manja is manja, which is not made out of cotton at all. It is made out of this synthetic material, which never breaks. You need a, uh, a knife or a scissors to break it. Yeah. So this is a type of manja, which is the worst kind, because this is what people are buying these days. And actually, it has been banned by the government. It is illegal to use this manja. It is not allowed, but still in some shops, people are doing the wrong thing. They are selling it and some people are buying it. Yeah. So please never ever buy this manja. It is not good for you or the birds or anyone. And it is also not legal to do so. Yeah. Okay. Thank Next you, Dairia and Rishwan. Put your hands down. Ishani, can you unmute and ask a question, Ishani? Ishani, unmute Ishani. Yes, ma'am. So, like uh, in social studies, I've learned that uh, there is a project where we have to protect the Bengali tiger. So, why not for the other wild animals? Like, like yes, the other yes. Wild? Very nice question, Ishani. Many times you would have heard Project Tiger, right? That was a big thing that was used to protect tigers. Now, what happens is, Sometimes animals, we have ignored the animal and it has lost so much of, it ho of its home that very few of them are left and there's a danger that they may go extinct. And that is what was happening to the tiger, right? There was a danger in 1970s that the numbers had become so few that unless human beings stepped in and helped out and did the right thing, the tigers would completely vanish from the wild. Yeah, in fact, this has already happened to another animal, which all of us know, but we think we get mixed up, called the cheetah. The cheetah doesn't exist in the wild in India, but just less than 100 years ago, there were lots of cheetahs in the wild in India, and all of them died because we didn't take care, and they lost the, till the last one died. There are still cheetahs in Africa, but not in India. In India, we have another animal similar to the cheetah called leopard, which is still there. Yeah. OK, so that's one reason. Another reason is sometimes we need a big, beautiful animal which people recognize 
as sort of like the uh, you know the front of the whole thing and this animal is also on top of the food chain right top of the food chain means nothing else can eat a tiger or harm a tiger right but the tiger is absolutely important because everything below it depends on the tiger if the tiger goes away from our forest what will happen is its food which is the deer right the number of deer will start more and more and more and more and they will eat up all the plants so both the deer will die as well as the whole forest will die if there are no tigers yeah so that's why project tiger does that answer thank you Ishani, for your question yeah. dhruva you can unmute and ask your question dhruva ma'am yes dhruva go ahead quickly please we are running out of time so please everybody ask actually, your question actually ma'am i quickly. didn't i didn't finish actually ma'am I, i didn't finish doing the hitting what i wanted to see hey, all the way at the first place ma'am okay quickly can you because others are waiting so i request everyone who has put their hand up be ready ask your question very fast okay actually hey ma'am when actually ma'am hum actually ma'am hum hum actually ma'am during 2019 in, in humans started mixing up our bats with all all the other recipes and and everyone's and and the chinese started eating it but but that but that is is when the the, the that is when the, the all of the virus from the he bad started spreading to many and, and many people yeah yeah so that's a very important reminder that we should not interfere with wildlife we should not touch them we should not keep them in their houses we should not trap it and keep it in cages if we do such things only then diseases may spread to us okay thanks thank you janvi only one more janvi's question we'll take after janvi's question the rest of you will write your question put it in your class or in the same uh, channel and we will meet again next time madhavi ma'am will answer your question sure sure so that is yeah. yes madhavi yes write down your question send it through sharmila ma'am or in the same channel and we will answer all your questions don't be disappointed It's only because Jan running out of time and you do Jan have other time janvi go ahead Ma'am, my question is that so you said that pigeons are uh, like mm -hmm. pigeons are poisonous and they they can spread many diseases. So like how like how do they put it in the hospital and everything? Okay, so pigeons are not poisonous. They don't have any poison. But yes, just because they have been living so close to human beings and in such great numbers, right? even every time you look out of your house you will see thousands and thousands of pigeons everywhere so because of that the diseases whenever a numbers become a lot diseases spread very easily so as debashri ma'am explained that pfa will not take a pigeon because there is a risk that the pigeon will cause some disease to some other animal but there are other other uh, uh, organizations where they only take care of pigeons that way they cannot spread any disease to anyone else so if you see a pigeon in need call pfa and we will guide you yeah whom to call what to do right we can guide you as debashri said being kind to all animals is a must it doesn't matter what type of animal so even a pigeon if it needs help we can get it help okay thank you so much all right. ma'am There are thirteen more students with questions, ma'am. We'll send you the questions, ma'am. Sure, ma sure, sure. Okay, ma yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a very lovely session. Our children would definitely love to have a next session with you, ma'am. And we would certainly love that as well. We are looking forward to seeing all of you and answering all your questions. And as I said, you can send your questions through Sharmila, ma'am, or your teachers, or post them here. We will definitely try our best to answer. wonderful session with all of you really really so happy to hear such intelligent and interesting questions 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Everyone, Sharmila, you should have joined 11 o'clock. I'll ask you one last question. Thank you so much, ma'am. Children, children, one minute, one minute, children. To join the 11 o'clock class, children, you have 10 minutes break now. Okay, children? Thank you so much, Madhavi, ma'am. Ma'am, I just want to ask you something, ma'am. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Last question. Ma'am, can the virus spread from the pigeon if he touches feather? Well, not really. It doesn't happen so easily. But if you touch the bird itself, or especially, you know, when uh, if it goes to the toilet, right? That that can be quite dangerous. Yeah. But it's not as if all pigeons are sick. It could be some. It's just like human beings. Just imagine any time some human beings may be sick, some may be healthy. Right. So if you if a pigeon is healthy and it's not carrying any disease, nothing will happen to you. But we want you to be careful. Yeah, because then looking at a pigeon, you may not be able to tell. Is this a healthy pigeon or is this a sick pigeon? Yeah. So just to be careful, avoid touching pigeons. Okay. Children, in general, actually, whenever you see any injured bird or any bird or any animal, you should avoid touching it or taking it with you because in general, animals get very stressed. They have never seen, they have never interacted with a human being. When they are stressed, this uh, they release some kind of you know diseases or something. So in general, whenever you see any animal injured, as Madhimi ma'am mentioned, please call PFA and please ask the help assist uh, assist help from your like ask help from your parents in this case. Don't touch any of the animals because they get stressed and most of them in stress do release some kind of a uh, you know uh, a disease spreading. Uh, how to say, uh, uh, they do spread diseases. So in that case, please call PFA. Uh, as Miss Madhavi said, if you see any injured pigeon, dog, scared, you can always call PFA and we will provide you help by giving the numbers of the shelters. Thank you. Okay. Mom and also in my apartment, I saw a person taking the stray baby cat. Mom, is that illegal? No, so stray animals are not protected by the same law as wild animals. So taking a stray cat is not the same as taking a bird or some other wild animal. But remember, any animal, if you take it home, it needs full care. It's not like, oh, I'll feed it one day and then I'll let it go. No, it doesn't work like that. You need to take care of it for its full life because otherwise it will get dependent on you and then it won't know how to feed itself, right? So this Thank is a, you so it, much, whatever you do, you have to do it fully. Not one day I fed it, one day I didn't feed it. I took care of it for one week, then I let it out. No, that is not nice. If you take a stray animal in, you have to look after it fully, completely for its full life. OK, so sorry, we do have to end here. You have another class. So thank you so much, children. Your questions are wonderful. I thank want to much. hear. Rest of you, please do write your questions. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thanks bye, again, Camilla, ma'am. Bye, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, 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 ma'am. For five minutes, you can join your eleven o'clock class. Ma'am, ma'am, will will there be also one another session? Yes. Yes, we'll have, we'll have another session on twenty second. But when are we going to have it? Ma'am, in twen on twenty second. Your class teacher will inform you, children. Bye. The twenty second, the schools are opening. So, uh, is there only going to be the session for the ones who are at school or? Online also, ma'am left. On Sunday, ma'am is on. Anyway, let's go. Bye. Let's just ma'am, ma'am, if you belong.